This is our first voyage of the season into Magdalena Bay. It's early, mid-January. The female whales have just given birth to their young. This is a rare opportunity to see whales that are just a week, maybe two weeks old at the most. In January, we're here at the southern end of the bay. It's generally warmer, calmer, and a little more shallow. It's only about 30 feet deep under the seabird out there. As the season progresses, the whales will move their way up and they'll start taking little test swims out into the Pacific Ocean with the young. And, uh, but they're really preparing them for the long journey north, over 5,000 miles to their feeding grounds in the Arctic. So trying to attach a criticam to a whale, you spend a lot of time trying to find them. Once you found them, trying to get close to them and then finally attach an instrument to them so that you can record their point of view from their world. So I spent a lot of my time trying to get close to whales. Down here in, in, in Magdalena Bay, it is so incredible to first see so many whales out there and then to be close to them and to actually have them approach your, your boat. That is something that is so rare. That is really, truly a profound experience. You know, I, before coming down here, I was always very, very skeptical. I kept on hearing people talk about that these moms and calves approach the boats and that the moms, the moms almost present their calves to the boats. And here I am, and I'm out there on the boat, and we have a mom and a calf come over, and the, the calf is riding on mom's head. And yes, the mom absolutely is just approaching the boat and bringing it by. I never thought I would see that, and nothing compares. It's amazing that they have been called devil's fish. Humans used to shoot the calves with harpoons to keep the mom around the area. And of course the mom was furious. It would take these little boats the whalers had, smash them with their flukes. The guys would come back with broken arms and all, and there's no way that those guys that were on the shaling ship were gonna get into a boat and go out after the whales. So they had trouble keeping the guys on task with their work. <laughs> how it's changed. Now we have such a different feeling for them. We love them passionately. It's gone from uh, killing them from a, for a simple thing like oil to this great uh, extension of us to them and vice versa. I've been coming to Magdalena Bay now for 26 years, and it's really getting much better. There's more friendly whales, and it makes me wonder whether those females that brought their calves over to a boat once were calves themselves seeking out boats. The whales got under the boat and sort of were pushing it, so it was a little wobbly, which is really funny. The whale came really close to me and he, and he stuck his head up and then I got to hug him. <laughs> it felt really good. It's rubber, really rubbery. And it was really squishy and I got to kiss it. And then it blew in my face and it doesn't smell good. <laughs> Yesterday and today, we went out into our small expedition craft and, and uh, we were observing gray whales from the small boats. And every experience was a little bit different. You know, sometimes the whales were just out resting with their calves and they'd be several feet away and we saw maybe 10 or 20 um, mother calf pairs, quite a few of them. But other times the whales would come closer to our small boats and it was really up to the whale how the interaction um, occurred. You know, some of the whales would roll and the calves would be riding on the mother's back and the, we would watch small calves just be lifted up by the mother right up to the surface and the calf would roll over and roll back and forth over the mother. There was so much close contact between mother and calf. It was really beautiful to watch. 
but we got really, really lucky sometimes. And there was one individual whale, Olivia, who would come up to our boats. We could approach her or she would come to us. Sometimes she'd be have her head right up close to the zodiac and we could reach out and touch her and her calf. The calf was also very friendly. So Olivia would often be very still after swimming up close to us and she would just let us touch her. It was remarkable. She did not seem to have any fear of the boats at all and was very calm. And her calf seemed kind of playful and would also come right up to the boats. And we were, I think everybody touched a whale who wanted to. Being so close to gray whales like this and, and actually being able to touch them is a truly unique experience and one that only happens here in Baja, California. We were so lucky. Yay! After leaving Magdalena Bay, we had a chance to pass down through the Pacific at night. Really nice uh, ride following sea. Rounded the bend at Friar Rocks and saw humpback whales breaching over and over and over and over again. It wasn't long till it came right by the ship. Lots of people got pictures of that. This is a great place to look at humpback whales because there's a population here of about, uh, about 1,500 or so. They're off the Rebello Coqueto Islands, off the south part of Baja California, to the mainland and to here. Um, there's lots of uh, courting that goes along between males and females. Uh, we frequently see uh, cows and calves with escorts, they're called. Uh, these are whales that are moving along with that uh, cow uh, in hopes that she'll come into estrus. And that's what uh, we were watching, I think, uh, out here just off Gorda Banks uh, for much of the afternoon. Genetic studies show that some of these whales actually specialize in following a cow and calf. Others will go through their scramble competition and their brutal banging each other and beating each other up by slamming each other with their flukes and all. And they sort out uh, some sort of hierarchy, it's assumed, and from there they uh, will find the females and mate. The real draw, of course, at San Ignacio Lagoon is the gray whales. The lagoons offer a perfect location for them to have their calves. There's also a situation where they're after safety. One of the main predators for gray whales are killer whales, and killer whales don't seem to go into these lagoons. The water's also warm in these lagoons, so that's an advantage too. A perfect place to settle in and have a calf. This time of year, you can have easily 100 cow-calf pairs. So it's uh, the perfect place to go in, know you're gonna find cow and calf gray whales, and then just goof around with them for a while. It's just a really perfect place to be with gray whales and their environment. The first time gray whales were at least showed uh, friendly behavior was in the early 70s. There are Mexican fishermen that saw that now and then. Through the years, it seems like it's gotten more and more prevalent, especially in San Ignacio Lagoon. That's the baby? Oh yeah. Hi baby. Oh my gosh. In the years that I've worked here, there has been more and more and more friendly behavior. Some of them aren't afraid of boats at all and will literally uh, bring their calves over and sometimes push them towards the Zodiac. Why not? They're here for five, six weeks or so. They really don't really have anything to do except fatten up the calf and get them ready to start swimming north. So uh, what a pleasurable thing to do to come over to these boats as though they were some kind of creature with all these tentacles from above going into the water and touching them and uh, all kinds of great noises. And it, it, it's only understandable that if there was no fear, then why not go next to a boat? It would be really enjoyable for a gray well. This is the, the, the contact that people want with whales. 
to have them come up and seek out attention is mind-blowing. I mean, it just lights people up. I got to pet the whale. That was probably the most amazing experience in my life. Well, folks, that was uh, pretty impressive, actually, I must admit. I've uh, said hello to many interesting creatures in my time, but actually to have snot from a baby whale blown in my face, well, there's a first time for everything. So many times I've seen 40 or 50 or 70 year old people turn into 10 year olds in two or three seconds. Their whole personality changes and they never forget it. It's one of the greatest highlights that they have in travel, not just to Baja California. So behind us is Half Moon Bay, and tonight it's going to be our site for the Baja Beach Barbecue. This is a Limblad tradition that we've been doing ever since we've been coming down to Baja. And this really is an all hands on deck kind of setup. We're going to have our entire galley crew over there cooking up uh, yellowfin tuna, grilling chicken on the beach, grilling vegetables. We're going to have it right there ready to go. And when the guests show up, we're going to be standing at the water line with drinks in our hands. The guests are going to be ready for a night under the stars. One of our items is our main entree is a locally sourced sustainable uh, yellowfin tuna. The yellowfin tuna that we get down here in Baja is actually 100% uh, sustainable, fished by local fisheries and that helps us provide the stewardship to the ocean uh, which is something that is very important for Limblad. Another thing that we do is we like to use local companies such as Cabo Organics to provide us with all of our herbs. We use these herbs in many recipes, one of which is on the chicken, which we're grilling tonight in a form of a chimichurri sauce. Coming to the beach is one thing me and my sous chef always look forward to. We get to meet and greet with the guests as well as get a chance to get out of our galley. Um, we get to enjoy the sunset on the Baja beaches as well as enjoy a little bit of downtime and get to cook in our nice relaxed environment, get some fresh air in us and enjoy our time with the guests and enjoy the beaches like we're supposed to.